as a student of architecture, when I was studying uh, sustainable architecture, one could not help hearing about Auroville because um, in Auroville, there's, there's a special condition that architects do not have to adhere to so many rules and regulations. Uh, so zoning and um, building bylaws are pretty relaxed. So it becomes sort of a place where young architects want to go because you can experiment a lot. So for example, earth-based construction would be very hard to do in a mainstream city because you could not push it through your uh, building bylaws as a material. But in Auroville, you could experiment with that and that uh, really attracted me as a young architect. Um, but then Auroville was so much more than that. It was a complete package of sustainable living. Um, so um, I also got to learn about wastewater uh, techniques, also um, generating your own energy through wind, through solar, uh, also living with a low impact because Auroville is away from the city. It's a community in itself and you're always encouraged to sort of reduce your impact. Uh, Auroville has also a lot of organic farms in it. So it also re-established my connection with food. Um, so although I was working in urban construction, my whole life around me and the society around me uh, was sort of a manifestation of, of what anyone who would like a sustainable society to look like. Um, yeah, so those I spent two years there um, and I enjoyed every single minute of it. So when I was living in Auroville, I had a bike and I biked everywhere. Um, so I tried this idea of crowd mapping within Bangalore um, and just asked people who were biking and who were walking to just record their journeys and then share it on a map. Um, and uh, that was pretty interesting because uh, through that you could see sometimes um, the dangers that bicyclists put themselves in. So I just wanted to share uh, that and then bring that to the table in a discussion on sustainable transport that, hey, although we want our people to bike and to walk, uh, but the infrastructure provided is not uh, up to date. And that might be a contributing factor for people wanting to have a car because then uh, you are safe, you're sort of in your insular space. Of course, there are um, hundreds of issues that car drivers face, but then the absence of those infrastructure measures might make people might uh, lead people to aspire for a car um, which in turn does not fit into the whole sustainability uh, agenda so as an architect you say, okay so i got this green building and it's going to solve everything um, but then more and more um, as i have read and studied and observed society more and more um, it is as much a social issue as it is a technical issue So the current project is uh, about Canadian cities um, and their transition into um, a low carbon future. We work closely with community leagues uh, in, um, in Edmonton because we found them to be a very unique structure. Um, and, uh, and sort of there are a lot of community leagues in Edmonton that um, installed solar on their rooftops and then conducted energy retrofits. And we were very interested to know uh, how this influenced uh, the neighbors or the members of the league. Edmonton has a huge advantage. It has this 100-year-old community organization which enjoys the trust uh, and respect of its uh, people. Um, so what happens when such an organization takes on the idea of sustainability? What we found out that um, leagues are ideally suited within neighborhoods to lead this transition. But then since historically, they have not been associated with sustainability or energy transition, um, they do need to consciously also restructure, provide the space for, um, so for sustainability subcommittees to exist, um, to take on this idea. So that's a very exciting and interesting place to work in because it's very tangible, it's very, uh, local level and we partner with the, the Edmonton Federation of Community Leagues uh, and the Green Leagues program uh, on this. Just technological fixes might not save the day. We might end up replicating the same problems, uh, socio-ecological problems. Um, we might solve the climate problem, um, but then 
if we look at it as a long term chance or a chance to uh, rethink our society fix all that's going wrong i think this is a great time in history um, to do that it makes the problem more difficult uh, but then um, also but it is it's an acknowledgement that it is a complex problem it is a wicked problem it is society people um, technology um, environment all interlinked with each other and i think we cannot pick and choose um, which one we decide to fix